and of many faces, many personalities, adored by millions. Why? David Bowie. Now, if you put two David Bowie fans together and ask them to describe him, the chances are neither would recognize the man the other was talking about. Or ten David Bowie fans. Ten different descriptions. That's what makes him a superstar. And here to explain is Tom Hoving. You, David Bowie, wants to play everyone in a crowd of people all at the same time. His many sides and many faces make him one of today's most fascinating entertainers. Watch. Singer. Film actor. Stage actor. Star. One of the boys. One of the girls. Clown. Astronaut. Mind. Disc jockey. Painter. Strange painter. The song is called Changes. David Bowie wrote it in 1971, and over the years it has become more than just one of Bowie's catalog of hit songs. It is the theme on which Bowie has built a career. In an age when everybody specializes, even rock and roll singers, David Bowie still wants to try everything. Today, David Bowie is 33 years old. He's Bowie was born David Jones on the other side of the tracks in Brixton, a tough, grimy, working-class suburb of London. For Bowie, growing up in Brixton, the only way to bring color into his life was to invent it. At nine years of age, he was already dreaming of becoming a painter. And then, along came a singer who changed everything. I didn't show any particular leanings towards anything much until I hit about two, nine or ten, uh, and then I fell in on with the Little Richard band. I never heard anything that lived in such bright colours in the air. It, it really just painted the whole room for me. It didn't take David Bowie long to discover Little Richard's secret that performance was as important as the music itself. Bowie took the flamboyance and color of Little Richard's stage show, updated it with an outer space theme, added in his training as a mime, and in 1972 created one of the most memorable characters in all of rock and roll, Ziggy Stardust. Now, Ziggy play guitar, Johnny good with wind, yeah. by the I'd always found it sort of embarrassing to sing my own songs as me. Most of the songs I was writing at the time were about characters, and that's when it came to me that the best thing for me to do was put those characters on stage myself, and then it started becoming exciting. He was this kind of megalomaniac little uh, prophet figure uh, who came down to tell us that it was all over. We're never quite sure whether he meant it or not, whether he was from outer space or not. In 72, when he came out with Ziggy, everybody was getting very, very bored with seeing these groups going on stage and just boogieing endlessly. Lots of guitar solos, drum solos. And he just came out, and he was three-minute songs, and they were very sharp, very pertinent. He dressed outrageously. He, he reintroduced sex into music at that time, I think. I Stardust was his sexual ambiguity. The stage show was carefully designed so that Ziggy's fans couldn't really tell whether he was male or female. Though he even went so far as to tell the press at the time that he was bisexual. It was a bewildering performance, both on and off stage, because David Bowie was actually becoming Ziggy Stardust. Now Ziggy plays I found I was being 
treated very differently because I did look like Ziggy because, damn it, I didn't have any eyebrows. My hair was bright red and whatever. And I, because of that, it was very hard to wear a banker suit. So my clothes automatically changed to suit the kind of character I was playing. So, uh, and, and by that token, the people would approach me as Ziggy Stardust, not as David Bowie anymore, who in fact is David Jones, as you well know. So the three of us um, had a hell of a time for quite a few years and it, it did nearly drive me over the brink. But Ziggy was only one of many Bowie characters. For example, Bowie has been a space oddity named Major Tom. Oh, yeah. A pinup. A diamond dog. A lad insane. And a young American. His hook, his greatest hook, is change and always will be. Somebody who can make the world accept them through all their changes is, is the greatest because most artists, especially in the rock world, as you probably know, they reach a certain point in their development, they start selling millions of records and the record company says, stay right there, more like that, more tracks just like that, you know, don't go changing your hair for me. But Bowie did keep changing. As he ran away from Brixton and from Ziggy Stardust, Bowie wandered all the way from London to Los Angeles. While his face and his music and his lifestyle changed faster and faster and faster, until finally... In 76, it almost crashed forever, didn't it? Oh, completely. I'm fallen for the rock and roll kind of existence. I got a house in Bel Air and all that. And it was a... Um, a pretty sordid kind of feeling it pervaded the atmosphere and there's all these strange people hanging about i'd wake up and there'd be people in my living room that i'd never seen before and the trouble is i didn't really care that they were in my living room and then and it all started to build up like that unfortunately i had two very close friends who took me to one side and said that i had to get away i had to go away uh, Bowie, Bowie was not only disgusted by Los Angeles, he was disgusted by the imminent Los Angelization of himself. So he got right out of the States. Couldn't face England yet, but he went, um, he went to Europe, went to live in Berlin, uh, took a two-room apartment over a car showroom, started living on his own, doing his own laundry, his own shopping, cleaning the flat himself. I mean, for a man who used to travel with an entourage of 23 people, building a hairdresser, and someone curious to look after his clothes. It was quite a, it was quite a step. After Berlin, Bowie's frantic change of pace became slower, more carefully planned. And instead of just music changes, now he jumped from one art form to another. For example, just as his rock fans cheered his re-emergence as a singer, Bowie would narrate Peter and the Wolf with the Philadelphia Orchestra. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow. And when his fans thought he might be going classical, Bowie would turn up in an outer space film. Ziggy Stardust had now grown up to be the man who fell to earth, but he didn't sing. I like to hear people sing. Let's have singing, finding some singing. And just when his fans began to look upon Bowie as little more than a weird space character, Bing, he'd pop up on the purest form of family television. album, Scary Monsters, his fans will recognize an old Bowie character. Bowie's Major Tom, the astronaut who launched him to success, has changed. He's now a silver clown. Unlike most rock stars who stick to a successful formula when they get it, Bowie, when he does, deliberately changes direction and puts on yet another face. More than just a singer now, his image is still that of a man striving for artistic rather than commercial success. And Bowie's career of contrasts is still running strong. At the same time that he can be found singing inside a silver clown suit, 
He can also be found playing serious drama on Broadway. Bowie is currently the sold-out star of The Elephant Man. It is a physically demanding role for Bowie. Throughout the play, he must portray a man crippled and horribly deformed. I don't know why I look like this, Mrs. Kendo. My mother was so beautiful. She was knocked down by an elephant in the circus while she was pregnant. Something must have happened, don't you think? I really sort of go on just pure barbaric impetus. There's some, I, I do get fired up for something, and it's, it, it's not all cerebral at all by any means. A lot of it is pure instinct for knowing that I found something that I hadn't found before. Sometimes I think my head is so big because it is so full of dreams. What a talent. I saw him in Elephant Man and has a real tour de force. The drama critics were laying for him. The consensus? He was splendid. Thank you, Phil.